So you've went through and you've made a walk cycle. If you've done like I just did, showed you the basics. And like I said before, you want them to move from point A to point B. And you don't want to have to animate it all, all out like that. So what do you do? You use character sets to make tracks animation. And I'm going to show you that right now. Okay. Here's that same file we were looking at in my last tutorial. Turbo Walking. Now, first of all, you need to know how to create a character set if you're going to use tracks animation. So how do you go about creating a character set? Well, the way I found the quickest way to do it is first go to show, show none, so that's showing nothing. You can go to show and show NURBS curves. And select all the curves, set the global control. I don't need that to be selected, and I don't need a spine IK to be selected. So you got all his control curves set up. Make sure you're under animation. Go to character, create character set, go to the box to decide. I already have one character set made up for Turbo, so I named this one Turbo 2. Now there's a bunch of different options you got here. You got all keyable, and that will make everything in the channel box keyable um, in the character set. Even the scales and visibility and all that. You don't need all that. You can go from channel box and you can select the attributes you need. Or you can select all keyable except scale and visibility or re translate and rotate, whatever you want. I'll just have it from channel box and select the translate and rotate and I'll create a character set and now if you go down to the bottom right here in this little arrow click it you see turbo 2 is right there you created the character set. I already had one set up for turbo so I'll go back to that one and the other one I had set up for turbo I have split into his upper body and lower body and you can do that you can create sub character sets is what they call but I'll just show you this for now. So now you got a character set. Go back to show all so you can see everything. Now, how do you go about taking all this animation that you just did in these 25 frames and using it so that you don't have to uh, animate it over and over again? Click on panels up here. Go down to saved layouts. Go to perspective and tracks. Click on that and now you're in tracks animation. Now, what do you do next? Well, Kurt Turbo was already in here, but if you open it up and he's not, make sure you have the character set selected and then go to list and then click on auto load selected character. That'll get him in there. So, he's in there right now. So, what I do, create animation clip. See that right here? You go to create, go to animation clip. And click on the box. I have it set for T walk, and you have a bunch of different options that you can use. I'm on it. You can use time slider, animation curve, start to ending. I'm click clicking on start to end, and that's from frame one to 24. Now click create clip, and there you go. You have the clip right there. Now what can you do with that clip? Well, you can click on it, and you see when I go, it has. Well, first of all, let me do this. It has numbers, 24, 100% in the middle. It starts at frame 1, it ends at frame 24. Now, what if I want them to walk faster? I go over to 24, click on it, and just drag it in. And I can make them, and you, if you, I don't know how good it's just going to show up, but the percentage is going down. And you can slide. And now I've got them walking 70% of what he was walking, so he's walking 30% faster. So, yeah, you can do that, or you can make him walk slower. Click on it, drag it out. I can make him drag it up to 130, and then he's walking a little bit slower than he was. But I'll just leave it at 100 for right now. So, how do you loop it? Hit the shift button, go over that same number, and instead of getting the arrow back and forth, you get a loop. 
and you just click on it and you drag it out for as long as you want it to go. Drag it on out to 240, 10 frame, I mean 10 seconds. Drag it out to, well, I just dragged it to 220. Okay, so now I have it set to um, go for 10 frames. Now, watch this. It's something I didn't do. If you go to frame 60, see how see how that looks? You go to frame 240. You see that? Now, why is he doing that? Well, that's because the channel offsets aren't set to absolute. And every time his foot goes out, it's moving a little bit more forward. A little bit more and a little bit more, you see? What you want to do to stop that from happening... Go to your track, click on it, right click, edit clip channel offset, click on that. Set everything to all absolute. You got everything set to all absolute. Now, as you see I'm at frame 240 and you can see he just basically keeps right on walking. So, why would it be set the other way? Well, let's say you have an animation of a ball bouncing. Every time you want the ball to bounce a little bit higher or a little bit lower or go a little bit forward, that's why you wouldn't need it set for all absolute. But for a walk cycle, you need everything set to absolute. So now I have him set to where he can walk to 240 frames. Now I can select his global control. I want him to be at point A at frame 1 at 240. I'm going to move him out. And the only way I know to get him to the right distance is guessing. That's the only way I know. I'm sure there's a probably a way the pros know how to get him to walk the right speed, to walk, go with the right speed of the animation. But I just guess. And let me show you on what we got here now. Window, play blast play blast and now instead of looking like he's walking on a treadmill he's actually walking and now see that is so much more simpler than what you would have to do if you didn't have the tracks you would have to animate every step he's taken and that would take a long time but now you got this track and you ain't got to worry about all that. So that's good enough. Let's hit escape to stop the play blast. And that looks right. Right off the bat, that looks like he's walking the right speed. Sometimes I do it and he, he looks like he's walking too slow and too fast. And you have to kind of tweak it and adjust it to get it to look right. But that looks right, right there, like he's really walking. And that's so much easier than animating every step, you know. Well, I hope I explained this to you good. I hope you learned a little bit of something today. Um, probably might have been best if I started to show you how to use tracks animation with something a little simpler, simpler like a ball or something. But this gives you the general idea of how you use tracks animation. And I'll talk to you later. Y'all take it easy.